So uh, I'll, I'll do that another time, shall I? Okay, okay. Hello, hello. Uh, Tim here. This is my second video. It's remarkable. I've now done one and now I'm ready to do another. I'm going to tell you all about the goddess Athena. Now, I wasn't actually going to do this. What I was going to do hmm, was... Um, tell you all about the Norse uh, creation myth, about Ginnung Gap and and Svartalfheim uh, and all sorts of things like that. But I'm not. I'm actually going to tell you about the goddess Athena. And the reason for this is that the team are actually encouraging our own Athena, Athena, Athena the, the academic, to come out into real life uh, and to do a video of her own. So, what we've done is try and find ways to uh, help her come out, as it were. So uh, Totsky's done his weird and wonderful meditational moving thingy. And um, Sean did some free writing last night. I'm not entirely sure what Sam would do. He might write a filthy poem or something. Anyway, anyway, so I've done some research on Athena the goddess Athena, for our own Athena. So let's start. Let's have a look at what she was. Now, we have an image of Athena. She's tall and strong and quite Amazonian and wears a long white dress, if you like, with a breastplate over it and a big helmet on. Her sister Aphrodite says that she looks hideous without it. And uh, she has a spear and she has a little owl, not a little owl, a little owl, that's actually a species, uh, on, on her shoulder, which is rather lovely. Um, and the, the, the owl has big, bright, shiny eyes, which makes it look super intelligent, so wonderful. Now, I, I'm looking over here because I, I made some notes or so, you know this. Okay, so a lot of what I've done in my research I've taken from Robert Graves, which is this thing here. There we go. Um, only Robert Graves is writing in the 1950s and he's, he's an awful sexist to work, he really is. Um, but interesting interpretations. Having said that, there are certain much more interesting re interpretations by this book here, which is my golden bible. Now then, so we start off with Athena's birth. Now, Athena, there are, there are several different versions. Um, she's mostly claimed by the Libyans, actually, at first. So they say, they said in Libya that she was uh, an orphan and she was found by some nymphs by Lake Tritonis. Um, she accidentally killed her playmate in a, a toy fight with real weapons, evidently. Uh, her playmate was called Pallas which means young or a maiden. And um, so she took the name on because she was really sad and killed a playmate, you know. So she became Pallas Athene. And she's often called Pallas Athene, but not all the time. There's another version which says that her dad was called Pallas and he was a horrible, great, monstrous thing with goat skin and big wings and he tried to rape her. There's a lot of rape in Greek myth. There's an awful lot of rape in Greek myth. So he tried to rape her and she got really, really distraught because she, from birth, she said, I will never marry, I will never have children, I will never have sex with a man. We'll get to that later. But anyway, so she, so in, uh, she fought him off, beat him up, and then skinned him and took his skin and his wings for herself. Okay. Yeah, that does a fairly obscure ones. The most interesting and the most popular myth of Athena's birth is that Zeus, yeah him, him with the uncontrollable libido, uh, fancied a nymph called Metis. Metis is all about counsel and giving good advice and so on. Right. So, we don't know if Metis really liked him or not. We're not entirely sure, but eventually he got hold of her. There's a story where Metis does one of those um, shape-changing uh, runaway things where she, she dashes off, well, changes different shapes. Eventually, 
excuse me, eventually he captures her. Now, he might sweet talk her, he might just take her out. God knows I did. Anyway, after he's had sex with Metis, Mother Earth tells him that any ch a child of Metis might actually supplant him. So he goes right back to Titan Roots and swallows her whole boom, right away down. You know, hello, darling. You know, how he gets her to do this. He says, hello, look, come here. It's a honeyed words and everything. Wow. Right? So she, apparently she gives counsel and good advice to him from inside his stomach. So, you know, he's got like a good gut instinct. Right. So um, after that, He's walking, he didn't realise that she was pregnant, so he's walking by Lake Tritonis and he gets a dreadful headache. An absolute banging, splitting, horrible, horrible headache. Right. And he's howling and moaning and Hermes comes along and works out what's the problem and calls over either Prometheus or Hephaestus, one or the other. Right. They then... One of them takes either an axe or a, a wedge and a big mallet and split Zeus's skull open. Which, you know, is drastic for a headache cure. But out pops Athene. Fully armed, big shout, big spear, and so on. Fully formed as an adult. Which is great. So... <clears throat> After that, she very much says she never ever wants to marry her children. She remains, she's known as the virgin goddess, very much. She's the maiden goddess, Pallas Athene. Poseidon, who might be a husband in some myths and is actually her enemy in a lot of myths, which might actually be the same thing, to be fair, um, tries to fool Hephaestus that... Um, she fancies him. Now, Hephaestus is not a bonny man, not a pretty fellow, but that doesn't really matter. So, anyway, she's already given this vow of chastity anyway, but Hephaestus doesn't realise and he falls for it. And he's, she goes to see him for something and he decides he's having it. No, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's not. She fights him off. She beats the crap out of him, but he's really into this. And he... Um, he jizzes on her leg. Honestly. <laughs> and she's thoroughly disgusted. It's a bleh. Ew. Oh, no. God's sake. Yuck. Right. Um, so she takes some wool and she wipes it off her leg. Like, 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 like this. Like that, right? Wipes it off her leg and uh, throws the wool on the ground. Only this makes Mother Earth pregnant. Yeah, okay. Mother Earth gives birth to a boy called, one moment. Oh, what's he called? Eric Thonius. Eric, Eric Thonius. Eric, Tho Eric. Right, Eric. Uh, he's, he's, he's actually visualised as a human face, but the rest of him is, is a snake. Not really, yeah, honest. Is it snake body and everything? So, yeah, yeah, anyway, she, Mother Earth doesn't like him. So Athene says, well, fine, I'll look after him. She sticks him in a basket and gives him to a nymph called Aglauros, who's the daughter of King Se Secrops. And Queen Agraulos. Yes, so it's Aglauros, daughter of Agraulos. Yeah, it's uh, glowering daughter of growling. Anyway, she's one of three nymphs uh, Aglauros, Pandrosos, and Hursa. Now, Hermes comes along. Hermes actually really, he really fancies Hursa. He's got a bit of a thing for it. So he offers Aglauros some money 
um, for Hersa because Hersa's the youngest child and Glauros is the oldest one. Um, Glauros takes the money but doesn't do anything to try and talk her sister into it. So Hermes goes and rapes her um, several times because they have three children. Later on, after all this has happened, they look in the basket, which and in the basket is this snaky bodied thing with a human head, and they go, ah, scream, yeah, and jump off the Acropolis. It may, Graves reckons it might have something to do with enforced monogamy, and that's why they would jump off the Acropolis. Okay. Um, Athene is so shocked when she hears the news, because a crow comes and tells her the news, that she drops her mountain. Yes, yeah, she was carrying a mountain. Uh, and um, basically, she, she, she says, oh, crows must now be black and aren't allowed on the Acropolis. <laughs> what a thing to do. Anyway. So eventually, she looks after Eric Thonius, Eric, Eric Thonius, Eric. She looks after Eric, and he becomes a king of Athens. Okay, so let's have a look on the next page. Um, what does she do? She she invents flutes and trumpets and clay pots and plows and oxen. She's very clever, super clever. Um, there are some other stories as well. For instance, she, she invented the flute, but she actually stopped playing the flute because the other goddesses laughed at her when she puffed her cheeks up. So. Now, if you play a flute, you do it like that. So I think it was an hour loss, which is like a reed instrument. So you... When you play it. Okay. Um, planted the first olive tree in Athens, um, which right next to Poseidon's... Uh, well, and he was most miffed and it ended up with a court case and all the goddesses supported Athene, so, you know, she won. Um, she also rescued Zagreus' heart, and but I always thought that was someone else who did that, so never mind that one. We'll not worry about that one. One of the important things she did was make Medusa ugly. Now, I've not quite worked out how this works. But she was apparently very, 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 very miffed when Medusa, who was extremely beautiful, and one of the Gorgons who were all really ugly, I don't, yeah, never mind. Um, and Poseidon, yeah, him, had sex in Athena's um, temple. Now, we, some say laid with, Robert Graves says laid with, but then again, he was, he's a patriarchal man from the 1950s, you know, so well, fair enough. Others say raped. Now, yeah, again, an awful lot of that. Oh. Rapey buggers, the ancient Greeks, very rapey buggers. So, it sounds like victim blaming because Athena was really, really pissed off. She couldn't do anything to Poseidon, so she made the beautiful Medusa into this hideous thing with snakes for hair and, you know, big teeth and nasty, glary eyes. And, right? However, there's another theory that says that maybe she gave her the wherewithal to fight men off by turning them to stone. Never get raped again. It's a theory. It's a theory. She also um, created spiders. She didn't like spiders, but she created them anyway because there was a lady called Arachne, which we all know means spider. A lady called Arachne who was really, really good at weaving and Athena was really good at weaving. So they had a competition and Arachne won because Arachne's, Arachne did this image, this wonderful weaving, and it showed images of all the gods doing very, very, very naughty things, particularly Zeus, because, you know, he's Zeus, he does a lot of naughty things. Um, Athene didn't like it, um, but she couldn't actually find any fault with it. It was perfect, so she got really pissed off, ripped it to bits, uh, beat her uh, arachne around the head with a stick of some kind and turned it into a spider after she'd hung herself from the rafters. Turned her back, brought her back to life, turned into a spider, and she now 
spins cobwebs all over the place and does perfect weaving and so on. She's also um, involved in the Trojan War because she's the one who, te well, it actually goes right back to the uh, the golden apple thing. She's one of the three goddesses and she, who, who wants the golden apple that says Callisti on it and she doesn't get it because Paris is a young man and he's offered sex by Aphrodite. So, you know, she, yeah, she's got no chance really. So she sides with the Greeks in the Trojan War and teaches them how to, do, how to make the big wooden horse and helps Odysseus get home afterwards and everything. The one thing that's actually I'm getting to here now is our, Athene never actually has officially a husband or children and she's regarded as a virgin, right? Now, there's a story that says um, she was bathing and the seer, who he later became a seer, Tiresias, accidentally, was out hunting, needed water, accidentally came to the pool where she was bathing. And she blinded him. However, there's a little more to it than this. Because according to certain other sources, ho ho ho, she wasn't bathing on her own. She was bathing with a lady called Chariclo. And Chariclo was actually Teresius' mother. Chariclo was her worshipper, companion. Yeah, they, they bathed together. And it's Chariclo that um, actually asked Athene to give Teresia second sight rather than, you know, because she couldn't give him his proper sight back. So he became a seer with second sight and he could understand the language of the birds and, and so on. So what, what I've got here is that image of the, t the, the ancient Egyptian image of the two men who lived together their whole the whole adult lives and were buried together and they were hairdressers and, and archaeologists and historians says they were the greatest of friends. Yeah, of course they bloody were. So, Athene? Lesbian? Duh! I don't know if this is going to help but I don't think our Athena is a lesbian, actually. I think she's bisexual. I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to ask her when she appears. You know, it's, it's one of those things. Anyway, let's hope all that helps. And, uh, bye. It, where is it? Oh, it's there. Yeah.